One of the biggest problems we face as high level users is getting our email into the inbox. And today we're gonna help you solve that problem by sharing the secrets that we use with our personal clients to get them the most outstanding results. So stay tuned and build along with us. Please make sure you go to our email deliverability playlist and we kind of go over all the rules, but I'm gonna kind of simplify it to the core rules that really need to engage. First and foremost, if you are using the lead connector system, which is high levels version of Mailgun, you need to make sure that you're on a dedicated domain. And for all of you that don't know, if you take a look at my screen, you will see something that has lead connector. And if you don't see a domain with your domain name on it, then you need to go over to the right hand side and hit dedicated domain. When you hit dedicated domain, you're going to hit add domain. And basically you're going to add your domain. Now, uh, well, you always have to give it a little bit of a subdomain. A subdomain, just to be super not confusing, is anything you put in front of it. As you can see, it has mg.mydomain.com. In our case, we would just hit replies dot whatever. And once I do that and I hit add and verify, I have to add these specific records into my actual domain provider. Now, what do I mean by domain provider? If again, if you want to go back and watch some of these videos that we've created already for you, there is a whole entire... Uh, portion that's dedicated to that. I'm going to link that video on here so you guys can see it, but, and I don't want to spend too much time, but if this step is not there, the odds of it getting into your inbox is going to significantly decrease. The reason is because if you're not using your own custom domain, everybody that is on high level that has not updated to their own personal custom domain is on that domain. So that means that you are sharing that with everybody else. And if they start sending bad emails, the chances of your emails going into the spam box are incredibly high. That's rule number one. You got to make sure you do that. Even though high level is super powerful, it doesn't act as an inbox, meaning it's not going to receive a mail. So you can't create fake addresses and let them go back and forth. You got to make sure that you create an actual email address using a Google workspace or a Microsoft. And again, we have a video for that in the Google workspace section of our channel. So please make sure you check out one of those videos if you need a full setup for that. But the main focus of what we're going to try to do that that's going to make you incredibly different than everybody else is making sure you create some kind of segmentation. Nine times out of 10, what happens is you download a list. It's not a warmed up list. And what happens is you don't have a dedicated domain. You don't have a real email address and all of that creates noise. And then it doesn't get your email sent to the right place. Now, if you want average email sending with 10 to 15% open rates, then you can use the lead connector mail and not do any of the things suggested on this video. If you want higher deliverabilities in the 40s, 60s, 80s, even you're going to want to make sure you take those steps. One, dedicated domain. Two, ensure you have a real email address. And three, make sure you add the holy trinity of records, all of which we've covered in previous videos. Now today, what we're gonna focus on is email segmentation to ensure that we are identifying who are the people that are opening, that are engaging and giving them points for it. So today what we're gonna do is create an email lead score and actually show you how you can engage with the most active users to increase your reputation and to keep delivering outstanding results. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go to one of our accounts. And notice in this particular account, it's an old legacy Mailgun account, meaning I'm not using the LC system and I have a dedicated domain. So part one is done. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create an email segmentation. So if I hit the go back button, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna create an email lead score because I wanna give a score to people that are interacting with my emails and I wanna make sure that I'm only interacting with people or sending emails to with people that are actively opening. Why do I wanna do that? Because I wanna make sure I have really positive engagement with my emails because it's great sending to a bunch of people but if none of them are opening your email, it hurts you more than helps you nowadays. And this is the only way to truly fix that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop back over into my main on the left hand side and I'm gonna go all the way over to settings and in settings, I'm gonna go to custom fields. Now, now, remember, high level is always changing where things are. Don't get panicked. What you're looking for is custom fields. When you get into custom fields, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a field and I'm going to add it as a number field. Inside the number field, I'm going to select number. I'm going to hit next and I'm going to call it email lead score. All right. And it's going to ask me, where do I want it? I'm actually going to group it in general info because the way it works is first is the contact info, info your name, your email, your phone number followed by the general info, which is like your address, your business name and all that other stuff. And then it has the additional info. Additional info keeps getting buried. I want this front and center so I can see it. So I'm gonna put it in general info and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now that I've done that, well, now I have a lead scoring system, but I kind of almost wanna see when the last time they did something with my email. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go also create a, another custom field. So I hit the add field button. I'm gonna go over to the date picker. I'm gonna go next. And then I wanna know the date of the last time they interacted with an actual email. 
because I wanna be able to sort by this later on and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna put last engagement. Let's make sure we spell that right. Last engagement, write that again. Last email engagement. General info because I want it front and center and I'm gonna go ahead and hit a save. If you don't, you can put in additional info. It's not gonna really have an impact. And now I'm gonna hit save. Well, now I created two custom values that I can now measure, but I need automations in order for this to work. This is where things are gonna get really cool. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna to go to automations and I'm gonna create a folder. I'm gonna name this as a core folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in C in front of it or Z or R, whatever you wanna name that makes it your core bunch of folders that you always want on no matter whether you're serving clients or this is for yourself or whatever else. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put um, C101 and it's gonna be called email lead scoring. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a point system that I'm gonna to give to all of the actions that people do inside my email. So then I can have a really focused look of what's going on in my email. The reason again that I wanna do this is I always wanna be in sending emails to a bunch of individuals that have positive results. So, or that are doing positive actions with an email. Now that I created the folder, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna create a workflow. I'm gonna start from scratch. And if you have either LC email or Mailgun email, there is a backend connection with Mailgun that allows us to see email events. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, C01, and it's gonna be email score, and I'm gonna give them one point for whenever they open up an email. So I'm gonna come over here, and I wanna do this all over, like every single email that gets sent out from my system. I'm gonna go ahead and add new workflow. I'm gonna come over here, and what I'm gonna do is, I first have to pick email events. Okay, email events, come over here, an event is going to be opened and I'm gonna hit save. And I'm just gonna tag it appropriately because I wanna make sure that I'm not confused on what the actual event trigger is. Email open, perfect, here we go. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait about five minutes because what I wanna ensure is that sometimes people click and unsubscribe link. I don't wanna give points to people that clicked unsubscribe. So what I'm gonna do is create a five minute wait that allows a system to process. Let's, let me just kind of label this again, five minutes. And I wanna check for unsubscribe. All right, come over here. I'm gonna hit save action. I'm gonna hit now. I wanna make sure that I check that I'm only gonna reward people that haven't unsubscribed and that click to make sure that that click wasn't an unsubscribe click. So here is the condition that I'm doing. I wanna name it is check for unsub. Customer unsubscribed, okay? And then from here, I'm gonna to go to contact details. Now I have it where anytime somebody unsubscribes that I've already given them a tag because I wanna make sure that the second somebody unsubscribes from my list that I'm immediately removing it. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do unsub tags because that's what I used. Includes unsubscribe. And if I don't have it, obviously this is a test account. I might not have that system already, but I'm gonna hit unsubscribe. So I have unsubscribe and then I'm gonna hit save action. Now from here, if they didn't unsubscribe, they're gonna go down the none path. What I wanna do is now give them a score. So I'm gonna type in math. And here, the field that I wanna update is the lead scoring field. And in here, I'm gonna add one point. And then I'm gonna update again the lead. So first I'm pulling in a value, the, the custom field, then I'm adding a point, and then I'm updating the field. And I wanna name this email score plus one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna hit the plus sign and then I also wanna update the engagement because now they've also engaged. So this is gonna be the last engagement I've seen from them and I wanna make sure we record the date. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update that another contact field. Remember that other custom field that we picked, which was uh, last email engagement date. I'm gonna put that to current date and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait one day just in case I start a conversation. I don't wanna keep it where I'm overscoring them based on the fact that they're interacting with me back and forth. Now, some people want maybe two days because it takes you two days to respond. So that's fine. We're gonna do two days to prevent overscoring. You got spell check. I'm gonna hit save. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back under here and I'm gonna remove them from the workflow. The reason I wanna do that is again, I wanna ensure that when people are going through this, they're immediately pulled out. 
Now I'm gonna go to settings and I'm gonna allow for re-entry because I want this to consistently keep happening. And even though there's no more conversations, just to force a habit when it comes to uh, emails being sent out and conversations and all that, I'm gonna mark those two things, allow for re-entry and marked as red and we are set to go. Now, every time somebody opens an email and we check for unsubscribe, they're gonna get a point and I'm also gonna record when their last engagement date is. Let me just say update, last email engagement, awesome. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna hit save action. I'm gonna hit save, this is ready to go and I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. Now, because this is not sending anything to the client, it's not gonna have any kind of impact. So even if you did something wrong there, as long as it's not an email kind of going to the client, you're gonna be okay. Now that I created the first initial one, the other two are gonna be easy, right? We wanna reward when somebody's clicked an email or reply. Now, reply to me has the biggest kind of factor because that means they're engaging any kind of engagement on a replies actually gives you really good positive scores so i think we named it zero one so we're going to zero one point two this is going to be our email events oh actually i'm sorry this is going to be a customer reply so i'm going to be customer replied and again i want to know when they reply to every email so i'm going to reply in the channel the channel is obviously going to be email and i'm going to go ahead and hit save trigger normally you add continuous filters if they're specific to the workflows but in this case we're not going to do that and we're going to go ahead and hit save trigger customer replied and again i'm just going to name it okay when they reply what I want to do is I want to reward them the most points possible. In my system, it's going to be five. You can do 10. You can do eight. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to come in here and immediately do the math operation. Same field. Email lead score. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add five points this time. Update the email lead score. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Email lead score plus five reply. All right. Right from here, I'm going to hit save action. And then same thing. It's a positive interaction. So I want to update the field. So again, contact field, come over here, hit add, come from here. And we're going to do last because again, it's the last email engagement. I'm going to come over here, current date, and it's going to update the current date. Again, you just want to label these. So it's last email positive uh, or last email engagement. And you could do the whole check with unsubscribe, but when it comes to reply, it's usually something positive and we're just going to do positive intent here and assume that. All right, we're gonna wait two days again because I don't want conversations to be misconstrued or more importantly, overscore. So two days to not overscore. I'm gonna hit save action and then I'm gonna remove them from workflow. All right, and it's gonna be the current workflow. And just like before, go to settings, allow for re-entry and then come all the way, mark as tag and publish and save. Awesome, now we're ready to rock and roll. Then I'm gonna come back and we're going to keep going. The third one is going to be when somebody's actually clicked the email. And now look, I didn't name it. So let's go back and name this because we want to make sure this is all perfect for you guys, right? So coming over here, this is going to be uh, e email lead score. And it's going to be reply plus five points, right? Let's go now to the final one, which is going to be clicked. With the click one, believe it or not, we can use the one that we've already created. So we can go back to the email open. Let's come over here and what we're going to do is duplicate the workflow. This is going to be three. Instead of open email, it's going to be, and it's going to be plus three, plus eight, whatever you want to make it. It doesn't really honestly matter. Come in here, click on that email events. Instead of being open, it's going to be clicked. It's going to be saved. And again, same thing. It's going to wait five minutes, check for unsub. Here, the email score, instead of being one, it's going to be three. Because again, we have all this information. We still want the last email uh, engagement date. We want to wait at least two days from overscoring and we want to remove from workflow. That one went way quicker because we already had the open one built. So look, this is ready to go. And again, we just check our settings, allow for re-entry, publish, rocking and rolling. That one went super quick. I want to also tag them if they have over 20 points because then that means they're super engaged, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another workflow, start from scratch, come over here, C 1.4, our uh, email, all right? So I'm gonna come over here, and but this time I'm gonna focus when the context changed. And I'm gonna focus on one particular filter. Le email lead score changes, has changed, see? Contact change, what, what part of the contact changed? Well, the email lead score has changed. And then once I do that, and let me just put that in here so then you have it, okay? Has changed, save the trigger. And then this time what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a condition, if else, come over here and this is, now what I wanna do is, if the, ta if the value, right, the custom value, so let's say email lead score is greater than or equal to 20, 
It could be 15, 10, whatever your limit is and whatever you feel is appropriate for your particular niche genre and whatever you're serving, you're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, when they get, oh, let's just kind of name this a little bit, ag tag for score, and this is gonna be email lead score. Boom, come over here, add a tag, and then in this particular tag, oh, engaged email or engaged buyer or engaged leads. So let's just put engaged leads just to make it easy. So engaged lead, boom, hit save action. And then again, we're just gonna put, or engage customer. Again, you can you can make different variations where one, some is a lead, then it can verify and check whether or not it's a customer. Again, we wanna give you a very simple way because the secret sauce of this is not any of this actually. Uh, and by the way, again, settings, allow for re-entry and then mark as auto red. Again, the mark as auto red is not really necessary for this particular one, but I just do it always as a habit. And I, because I want you guys to kind of develop the same habits. Now that I have my lead scoring and everything else, here's the kind of the big differentiator in how this really applies to what you're doing on a day to day. I'm going to go to contacts. Inside of contacts, I'm just going to change myself over here and I'm going to give, remember, I added those to general info now. So if I come over here, notice I have a lead score. I'm going to put a lead score of 25. I'm going to pick my last engagement date of uh, July 3rd. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Remember, this will be done automatically, but for the purposes of what we're going to do next, I want to make sure you have it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to, I want to make sure, see, I already got the tag of engaged email because the second I went over 20, it changed to see if it was fit, and then it immediately added the engaged lead right here. But that doesn't really help me. What if I now want to send a mass email and I want to just have really high intent, high deliverability and everything else? Well, now what I can do is I can create a filter that says lead, email lead score greater than 20, 15, whatever you want. I'm gonna hit apply. Filter by the people, we'll just say email lead score over 20. But it's not gonna stop there. Here's the really cool thing that I wanna make sure you do. Now that we have this selected, I wanna add columns. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do last email engagement. I wanna do the email lead score. So not only do I have the tags, the last activity, but now I know that this person open my la latest email and it has a lead score of 25. Imagined if I had all my people that had an email lead score of said whatever number. Now that I've added those two columns and I've already created this, I can come over here, more filters, hit save. And what's cool is it's gonna forever save these two columns. So I can be in my all and everything's kind of normal, but then I can go to my email lead score. And now I'm about to send a blast to all the people that you know want to receive my emails. And guess what? Now I have the ability. I can come in here, tag all of these, click on the little send email or add them to a specific workflow that's going to go over five or six days. And now I have the most engaged people that are most likely open my email based on their past actions. And then you can even take it two steps further by giving them engagement tags based off of purchases, lead magnets, how many lead magnets or surveys they took and keep adding to the email engagement score or an engagement score itself or just a plain old lead score. This is mostly dedicated to ensure that you're always sending to the most, most market fit people you could possibly have. Now, the other part that you can add is interest-based targeting. If you're a person that has your course seller, your coach, maybe you're coaching on multiple different things. Maybe you're coaching men versus women. Maybe you're coaching very specific to a niche and maybe inside that niche, you're coaching on three different things. If you're sending a lead magnet, let's say in my instance on email deliverability, I wanna make sure that I'm always tagged basing on interest. So then when I send emails out, it's gonna be on email deliverability. If I was doing some kind of tagging and it was like teaching people how to use Zapier, then I wanna make sure I tag them because they have a Zapier automations interest. The more interest targeting you're doing, along with making sure that you're sending to only really engaged people will ultimately always increase your email reputation. So I hope this was a really helpful video. This is the secret sauce of how we're getting all of our customers to win and we'll see you on the next video.